Hello and welcome back. In this video we will discuss transformations which are specially made to correct the variance of the errors if that does not fit our modeling assumptions. So let's see what we can do there. Here our assumption is that the mean is okay but the variance of the residuals is not okay. We can see that in a residual plot, if we have y hat here and epsilon hat here, then if things went right, we would get a band centered around the x-axis. So a residual plot, when the model is appropriate, should look somewhat like that. And what we did in the previous section corresponds to the case where the mean is wrong, and that would show like if the values are in a band like this, then we know we need to transform to get the mean right. So points like this. And in the present section we are concerned with cases where maybe the residual plot looks like this or looks like that. So the values are scattered around the x-axis but the variance is not the same everywhere. So for example here it's a small variance for small y values, here it's a small variance for extreme y values and large in the middle and there are of course other things you could run into. And like in the previous section there is just a collection of tricks you can try. So let's just assume for a second if it looks like this. So we have residuals which form kind of a wedge and small y values correspond to small residuals and we kind of see straight lines here. Then I would argue probably the standard deviation of the errors is proportional to y since here is our estimated y values and here are the residuals and the spread is given by the standard deviation. And so we would have variance epsilon hat is proportional to y squared. And now we need to do something to change this. And in this case, well, we know what we want. So we want variance of epsilon hat is a constant. And we know if we multiply epsilon hat with a number, then the variance is multiplied with the same number. And our model says y is x transpose beta plus epsilon. So variance of y equals, that's a constant, so equals variance of epsilon. So what we need to do is we need to also achieve somehow variance of y is a constant. And now how do we do that? Currently it's proportional to y squared. We want it constant. So how do we do that? And now I did the tricky case here. Namely what we would do realistically is we would divide by the square root of that. So we would divide by y. So here I write it in quotation marks because we will drop that in a second. Divide by square root of variance of y. The idea we are going to drop that is the thing we are dividing is y. So then we would have y prime is y over y is 1. And that is of course a terrible idea because then we have lost all information about the outputs and there's no chance to fit the model anymore. So in this case that does not work. But let me just do a similar case where it does work. So if we have variance y is proportional to say y to the 3, then we could use this idea, namely then what we get is, if we just follow the logic I said, so we do y prime is y divided by the standard deviation, so y to the power of 3 over 2, then we get y minus y to the power of minus 1 half, or in simpler notation 1 over square root of y. And that is fine. We have not lost any information, we have just transformed the y so that hopefully the variance comes out nicely. And I used earlier this argument here, variance of y equals variance of epsilon, because they only differ by a constant. We can make use of that if in the process here we have destroyed some properties of the mean we need, we could, let me write it in red, we could also subtract some function of x here if we wanted to, which will not affect the variance and maybe helps us with the mean. But whatever, the basic model would be to use this if we start with the third power. Let's do another case. Variance of y if it's proportional to y, so the standard deviation is square root of y, then we can still do it. We can do y prime is y over square root of y is just square root of y is okay. So that's something we can try. And the only case which goes wrong is the one I picked here. So in this case, we can't do that. 
And there is a special rule for this case. So what people suggest in this case is to use the logarithm. So y prime is the logarithm of y. And that's the transformation you can try for this case. Good. So that is really all I want to say here. And there is a similar thing to consider as it was in the first section. Namely, these transformations affect not only the noise, but also the mean. So when you apply these, you need to check afterwards whether the mean is still appropriate. And if it's not, you may consider to modify the transformation in some way. Maybe you find a transformation which is good simultaneously for the mean and for the residuals. But again, that is very much trial and error. And the list in the notes is just to give you some ideas. Good. So that is what I wanted to tell you about transforming the variance of the noise. And in the next video, we will see one more transformation we can try to apply to the data. So see you there.